In this video, I would like to briefly do a walkthrough on how to get particle motion from Houdini into Unreal Engine. And this is going to be using a vector field, which is part of the game development tools. So I have the game development tool set right here. Um, and in order to load that, you need to hit the update tool set button and then download the, the latest game development tools. And if you don't see the game development tool shelf, you can get it here from the little plus sign. Shelves, game development tool set. So what I have is just a fairly basic particle system that swirls up and that's created uh, with a DOP network here, or inside the DOP network, I should say, my, my pop source. I'm actually just using an ax a pop axis force. That's what's giving it that spin and it's being emitted from this grid. So once we get the particle motion that we like, we can then generate a vector field. So I generate the vector field from the node where the particles are being displayed. So if I come back up to the object level and I go into my source particles, uh, I created this particle system with the particle shelf tool here. So in particles, I did source emitter. And so as many of Houdini shelf tools do, it generates, it generates the, or it, it takes a grid, generates the particles in the DOP network, then sends them to an, a new geometry node to display them. So in this geometry node, I have my particles right here. That's the DOP import. And then what I have is the ROP vector field. So again, this is part of the game development tool set. So once you install the game development tool set, we can then right click in here and I can go to game dev, export. I believe I have it in here. No, maybe it isn't. Okay, so <laughs> a better way to do it is just to, to right click and type in uh, vector. There we go. It's always a mystery where these, these different nodes hide in, in here. So if I type in vector, then I get it. There it is, game dev ROP vector field. So I would add that in. And then I just connect it in from my, my DOP IO. Then if I put my display flag on it. Now, uh, the way this works is we have to choose a particular frame that we want to export the, the vector field from. So it's not it's not gener it's not going to generate all of the movement from frame one to you know 240 or whatever I have here. Unfortunately, it's it's sort of it's a path. Uh, as I mentioned in class or described in class, you can think of it as like the lanes of a highway. We need to have our particles in our game engine enter from this side of the volume and then they will follow this path until they leave the other side. So we're really just generating a volumetric path that the particles will follow when they enter that volume. So I need to find a frame that I, I want to export here, which I'm going to go fairly down the timeline to where the particles have swirled up quite a bit so that I can generate a lot of paths for them to follow. And then in the ROP vector field, what we need to do is change the input type from volume to particles. By default, it's at volume. And that's great if you want to generate a vector field from a pyro source, which can be done. Uh, but in this case, I've, I've, I have particles. So my input type is going to be particles. I've also increased the sampling a little bit, 30, 30, 30. Um, and I turned on visualize. Visualize isn't on, we just sort of, we just see a, a volume actually. And now I can see what that path looks like that it's generating. And then what will happen is once I hit the render button and render this out, it renders in a format called FGA and Unreal Engine can recognize that. I'm using Unreal Engine, I'm assuming Unity, this could work with Unity as well, but I'm gonna demonstrate in Unreal Engine. So. Uh, that's going to generate this path. So I would hit the render button and render this out and it shouldn't take too long. And then once that's done, we can then bring it into Unreal Engine. We're actually done here in Houdini. So I'll put Houdini aside and I have Unreal Engine running and here's my particles actually following that path already. You can see they're swirling. And the way I set this up in Unreal Engine is first of all, I imported the vector field 
a trade here, static vector field. We could either just simply drag it and drop it right here into the content browser, or I can right click in the content browser and do import to game and it will load it in. Then what I did is I took that vector field and I dropped it into the viewport. So that's what this large volume box is here. So that is the, the lanes of the highway as, I, as I've been describing it, that when my particles from Unreal Engine enter from the bottom here, they take on the path of the vector field. And if I get in a little closer here, you can see that they're swirling up just like they were in, in Houdini. Now, the way I get them to interact with each other is I have to modify my particle system a little bit. So what I have here is I actually have the starter content and I've modified the P fire particle. So this is starter content particles. So in the uh, P fire, this is a cascade particle system. So if I double click on this to open it up, Oh, and it's off screen, so let me get this into our view here. So there's a number of, of emitters in here. I've turned them all off except for the embers. That's this one. And you can see by default, they just go straight up. So uh, a couple requirements in order to use a vector field from Houdini in Unreal Engine is that we need to make sure that our, our particles are GPU based. So we see here they are GPU. And then I need to add a global vector field. So I can do that by right clicking here and then coming down to vector field, which is being cut off. It's down off screen vector field. And then I'm adding a global vector field. So that's right here. In the global vector field, I am setting the global vector field scale to one and also the global vector field tightness to one. So that's actually off by default. You have to activate that. So I just set both of those to one. And the other thing that I did here that I, I, I changed some of the modules that are in here. I have it emitting from a cylinder instead of a sphere so that it's a, a wider area of, of particles. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanted to try to fill the volume that they're going to pass through the vector field volume out in the viewport. So I add, it just added that other than, you know, whatever customization you'd like to do to your different components or modules in here, the main thing is we need to add the global vector field and set these two values and then I can save it. And then out here, I placed my particle system at, inside the vector field and a couple things I'll have to do to the vector field out here is if I grab it in my viewport here so I'm still getting the BP sky sphere instead I can't get the vector field oh I might have to just find it in here uh, right there it is ROP vector field there it is so when I select the the vector field because it won't look like it's affecting your particles but uh, what we need to do here in the details panel for the vector field is we need to set the tightness again to one um, and then we need to increase the intensity you know that will determine how how fast and how much momentum the particles will have as they go through the part the uh, vector field so once we set those two and we line everything up we should get them following that swirl pattern we see they are now i have some that are kind of stopping here. So I might need to go back to Houdini and just double check my vector field. I'm not sure why they're slowing down right there, but I'm sure I could tweak that somehow. But that's basically how we set it up. So again, we want to think of it this way. It's it's like lanes of a highway. So we have to sort of coordinate things here. We have to put these vector fields in basically in front of where our particles are going to enter, enter it uh, from Unreal Engine. So my particle system is here towards the bottom of the vector field. So as soon as they're emitted, they're they're pushed along that path set by the vector field. So I hope that helps.